Coming up on Mountain News this morning, one man is now in jail and police hope he has answers in the case of a Southern Kentucky woman who vanished five months ago. The Pike County Sheriff's Office arrested a convicted sex offender on Monday after he was spotted near an elementary school. Plus, selected schools in eastern Kentucky receive federal grant money to improve safety measures. We looked at what those measures will be. Dedicated to eastern and southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning. The time is 5.30 on October 23rd. I'm Madison Pergram. And I'm Will Puckett on this Wednesday. Thank you for tuning in to Mountain News This Morning. Lily, little chilly this morning. Mm -hmm. Had to grab a coat. So if you're about to go out, it's a little cold. But let's go to Brandon Robinson. Brandon, do you have a grab a jacket this morning? Oh, I did. Listen, I'm cold natured in general. But uh, yeah, I had to grab a jacket this morning. And I, I keep a hoodie here at the station. You just, you never know. You just never know the forecast these days because we're going back and forth with this fall pattern. But high pressure and control for now. So clear skies. Let's take a look. Look. Whitesburg this morning downtown things are fairly quiet there as we head out the door here at 530. You're looking at temperatures Ridge Valley split for sure this morning. The ridges closer to 50, especially in those eastern counties there. The valleys in the upper 30s and low 40s, especially down into the Cumberland Valley, I-75 and Lake Cumberland corridors. Look at the difference between this morning and yesterday morning. Nine to 25 degrees colder depending on where you are this morning. That's a big change in 24 hours. Weather app forecast, you can download that for free in your app stores. Clear skies give way to sunshine, which gives way to about mid 60s for daytime highs. The rest of that forecast up on the way here in just a few minutes. Madison. Thank you, Brandon. Well, the Kentucky Humane Society is stepping up to rehabilitate a horse who was abandoned by her owner and left to starve. This is what Willow looks like now. When she first came to the Humane Society, she was even thinner. Caretakers say she's starting to respond to the feeding program, and the Humane Society is hopeful she'll have a second chance at life. Well, one man is now in jail, but does he have the answers to what happened to a Southern Kentucky woman who vanished five months ago? Corky Hendricks was found on Monday night, police say he was with 26-year-old Leanna Brumley before she vanished. As WIMT's Phil Pendleton reports, police feel like they are starting to make some progress. And that was the last thing I heard from her. The past five months have not been easy for Leanna Brumley's family. There's a little boy who's seven years old who's going every day without his mommy. And that is very hard for him. She vanished in late May, leading her family to question what happened. Since then, answers have been few and far between. The case took an uptick when Corky Hendricks was named as a person of interest. Then he was arrested on unrelated warrants. Made it a lot easier, made it very less stressful on wondering when her story will be over. Police say Hendricks had been living in a tent trying to avoid capture before he was found in a car late Monday night on Adams Road. Police say they're not sure what his relationship was to Brumley, just that he was one of the people last seen with her. We're wanting to talk with that. He's, sa he's stating he will talk to us, but he wants to have his attorney present. Because we've been waiting since May to know what happened to her, and it's just a waiting process. For now, Corky Hendricks only faces the indictment warrant charges, such as possession of a handgun by a convicted felon, marijuana cultivation and being a persistent felony offender, but police say they do expect that he will face more charges. In Pulaski County, Phil Pendleton, now back to you. Now Hendricks remains in the Pulaski County Jail. He said he did not want to talk to us about his charges. And while looking through federal court records yesterday, we learned a Pike County man will spend more than 15 and a half years in federal prison. Jason Lee Robinson robbed seven banks in six states. Robinson is from Pike County. He pleaded guilty to all charges. Robinson previously served time in prison for other bank robberies. He was out on parole during the latest crime spree. Tupac Shakur is alive and well. Right now, he's sitting in a Tennessee jail. But not this is not the Tupac that you may be thinking of. Police in Johnson City say this man, 40-year-old Tupac A. Shakur, was wanted on warrants. Police say they spotted Shakur and he attempted to pull a knife. He was found with baggies of meth and syringes. He was taken to the Washington County Detention Center. Shakur shares the name of the famous gangster rapper who was allegedly shot down in Las Vegas in 1996. 
And the police chief of Kentucky's largest city announced a reorganization amid budget cuts and a shrinking workforce. Louisville Police Chief Steve Conrad says multiple divisions will merge by December 1st in an effort to make the police department leaner and more focused. Along with the mergers, Conrad said the agency will reorganize its command structure. He says they will continue to reduce staff as needed. And currently, there are nearly 1,200 sworn officers on staff. Now, also in Louisville, one fourth grader's homework questioning naming Governor Matt Bevin has upset some parents. A mother recently posted her kid's grammar worksheet. The question asked students to put a comma in this sentence. He ran against Matt Bevin for governor of Kentucky, so I voted for him. Katina Alami posted that this was inappropriate. In response to the Facebook post, the Stouffer Elementary principal sent a letter to parents addressing the homework by saying a political endorsement was not the teacher's intent and that the situation is being addressed. And the Pike County Sheriff's Office arrested a convicted sex offender on Monday at Valley Elementary School. They say 74-year-old Richard Bartley of Pikeville was arrested in the parent pickup line outside of the school. Chief Deputy Lynn Cross says a concerned family resource officer contacted the Sheriff's Office when they con connected Bartley to the sex offender registry. Deputies verified that Bartley is on the sex offender registry with two counts of sexual abuse and two counts of rape. Cross says there were no reported incidents involving any children at Valley Elementary, but he says Bartley's presence on school grounds was a rules violation. And the main goal is obviously to keep the children safe, so this we feel is keeping the children safe by putting this sexual offender, uh, sexual offender uh, in jail because they are in violation of, their, uh, of, of the law. Bartley was taken to the Pike County Detention Center and Cross says people can do their part by reporting any similar safety issues to the department's tip line and that number is 606-766-5555. Selected schools in eastern Kentucky received federal grant money to improve safety measures. Well, WYMT's Katie Cook talked to members in one of those school districts to see how they are using their share of the funding. Some schools like Corbin Elementary are now able to ramp up safety measures. Any layer of extra protection that you can add that gives them the sense of security that uh, it's going to be okay to be at school. The school district is receiving more than $150,000 for improvements. We want the students to come to school and feel safe. Part of the funds are going toward upgrading the bottom windows of the elementary school. We have uh, safety film on all of our buildings except this particular building, which that's what we applied for. Decreasing the chances of someone breaking in. Some of the grant money will also be used to put new cameras and safer windows on buses. But these are not things that we want to think about. These are not things that um, you think that you would have to put in a budget when you're thinking about a school. But thanks to receiving this grant. It makes the parents feel safer, makes the kids feel safer. Students are even more protected than they were before. In Corbin, Katie Cook, WYMT Mountain News. Now Clay and Letcher counties also received grant money for improved safety measures. Well, Pikeville Police Department and Pikeville Fire Department are serving the community in a different way. Instead of just protecting people in the community, they are also preparing them. The departments finished their visits to the county schools yesterday, donating more than $16,000 worth of supplies to schools in Pike County. Those supplies paid for by funds raised during the annual Cuffs and Hoses 5K and donations from community partners are one way the departments are trying to lend a hand. Just the satisfaction of being able to help kids, not only in the city, but out in the county as well. It's a big effort for what, when we start this. We'll start now on next year. Part of the program gives officers and firefighters who are educated in the county an opportunity to drop the items off at their respective former schools. And one teacher in Johnson County received a prestigious award. Highland Elementary fourth grade math teacher Melanie Ramey has spent 12 years inside of a classroom. Eight years ago, a co-worker nominated her for the Presidential Award of Mathematics and Science Teaching. She says this year she finally had the credentials to apply. This is the nation's high highest honor given by the U.S. government to teachers. Ms. Ramey says she is excited to bring this award back to the mountains. And so there are a lot of previous Louisville, Lexington winners. There are some Ashland winners. Um, so it was nice to be able to represent Eastern Kentucky with this award. 
Ramey received a tour of the White House plus a certificate from President Donald Trump. We'll later hear from some of her students about why she deserves this award. Morgan Hall was a beloved counselor at Jones Fork Elementary in Knott County. She died July 14th after giving birth to her son. And at that time, Hall was working on new math and reading programs to help students. Her aunt began, began Morgan's mission to raise money to continue Morgan's dream. Morgan's mission reached the first of many goals yesterday. The WYMT's Lacey Roberts was there and has more. Although these halls at Jones Fork Elementary no longer have Morgan Hall walking through them, Tuesday her spirit was very much alive. Morgan had a great passion for kids that were behind in their reading skills and their math skills. Struggling for years with dyslexia, her passion came from her drive to help others and those like her. She made it her lifelong mission to work with kids that needed help. She became a counselor at Jones Fork Elementary School. And she said, to us, I've, I've found the place I'm supposed to be, and I want to help these kids. And she did just that. Her love for others continued to grow. Tuesday, the mission came full circle. Without further ado, Mr. Huff, would you honor us by accepting this software donation from Morgan's family on her behalf? A check for $8,700 will help keep Morgan's passion alive. It's overwhelming emotionally that you know, we have finally reached something that Morgan was trying to do beforehand and wanted to do. Well, this is a beautiful, loving act, and uh, it it represents her well. Something the school could not have afforded otherwise. Her legacy will be well represented in the education these kids receive. And although the sound of Morgan's footsteps do not fill these halls anymore. How much she loves these kids. The caring spirit she was echoes them. And not County, Lacey Roberts, WYMT Mountain News. The program's IXL for Math and Reading Plus for Reading will help develop their skills up to an eighth grade level. Well, coming up, after trying for four years to grow a massive pumpkin, one farmer in Tennessee finally made his dream come true. That's a big pumpkin. <laughs> well, some folks are waking up on a chilly note this morning. The sunshine will warm things up nicely by this afternoon. I'll break down your forecast hour by hour in about three minutes. 